Hello and welcome to another Siemens Combustion Control Overview video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the SQM5 actuator. And specifically, we're going to be looking at how to wire the actuator properly and how to set the limit switches properly. We are going to be using a, an actuator with a G board, which is a 4 to 20 milliamp input. And we're also going to assume that the actuator is set for red scale. And I'll get into that uh, shortly. After taking the cover off of the actuator, you'll notice there are several different cams and number scales. Whether the actuator is running on black scale or red scale, this first number set at the very end of the camshaft, right here, presents the absolute position for the actuator. It's not associated with any cams. So you've heard me mention red scale and black scale several times already. So let me explain what I mean to you. The SQM5 actuator can rotate in either a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. So if you would like the actuator to open in a, in a counterclockwise manner, the actuator should be set for black scale, which these numbers right here are in black. To operate properly in the black scale, we need to set the single pointer cam switches to the corresponding positions on the black number scale. So these single pointer cams right here are going to go on the black number scale. Likewise, if you want the actuator to open in a clockwise manner, the actuator should be set for red scale. So these red numbers down here are the red scale. For proper operation in the red scale, we now set the double pointer cam switches to corresponding positions on the red number scale. So again, these double pointers right here on the cam are set to the red number scale. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to set up the SQM5 actuator for operation in the red scale, so let's get started. Adjusting this first cam will set the limit of your open or high fire position. This cam right here. If we want to set this position to 90 degrees, we're going to slide the double pointed cam to the red setting of 90 as shown right there. Supplying line voltage to the A terminal will drive the actuator to this defined position. So this terminal right here, you supply power, it'll drive to that setting of your high fire, uh, your, your defined high fire position. And neutral would be on this N terminal. Next, we're going to look at the second cam right here. The second cam will set the limit of your closed position. So if we want to set this position to zero degrees, we're going to again slide the double pointed cam to the red setting of zero, shown right here. You'll notice that the first and second cams both share the same number scale. This is also true for the remaining cams and number scales. So these two cams share this number scale, and these last two cams share this number scale. If we supply line voltage to the Z terminal, this will again drive the actuator to its defined position of cam 2. So this Z terminal right here. I also want to highlight this third cam shown right here. This third cam will set your low fire position, which is separate from your closed position. Uh, again, closed position is cam two. This third cam here defines your low fire setting. So if we want to set that to a value of 10 degrees, again, we're going to slide the double pointed side of the cam to a red setting of 10, as shown right here. If you supply line voltage to the ZL terminal, or this terminal right here, ZL, that will drive to your defined setting on cam 3. 
Now that our limits have been set, we're ready to make our final adjustments. Terminal LR, this terminal right here, this is called release to modulate. And release to modulate means that we're going to drive the actuator between high fire and low fire with the use of an analog input signal. So since we're using an actuator with a G board for our demonstration, the input signal will be 4 to 20 milliamps. The positive end of this input signal will be wired into terminal Y plus right here. And the negative end of that input signal will be wired into the Y minus terminal. So here we have the actuator wired up. Um, first thing I want to point out is that you'll notice this OPE max min switch is set to the OPE position. Um, and you'll also notice that I have line voltage on the LR terminal here. It's very important to note you do not want to power multiple input terminals at once. So don't power um, simultaneously. You do not want power supply to the A, Z, ZL, or LR terminal. Only one of those terminals should be powered at once. Very important. So. Now that we do have power applied to our LR though, we can supply our input signal, our analog input signal, which in this case again is going to be a 4 to 20, amp, uh, 4 to 20 milliamp signal. I have the terminals here are hooked up to a signal generator. And so right now I'm going to supply 20 milliamps and the actuator is driving open. As you can see the shaft is rotating to our open position which again is defined by CAM1. Once we've reached our maximum position, our maximum open position, we want to uh, make sure that we have a properly scaled input. And the way we do this is to use a small flathead screwdriver like this one here and adjust the max pot, this blue max potentiometer. You're going to rotate that in a counterclockwise direction until the motor starts to drive slightly downward. This adjustment will ensure that we are utilizing the full range of the input signal. Now we still have power supplied on the motor and so now I'm, uh, now I'm going to introduce a 4 milliamp signal. We can see that the actuator is starting to drive downward to its closed position. And this closed position is the setting of CAM3. So when you use release to modulate, you modulate between CAM1 and CAM3. Also another important note. So now, now that we've driven down to our low fire position, again, we want to ensure that we have a properly scaled input signal. So we're going to use the same flathead screwdriver and we're going to adjust the min potentiometer, the blue min potentiometer. And again, this adjustment is going to ensure that we're utilizing the full range of the input signal. So you're going to rotate the min potentiometer in a clockwise direction until the motor starts to drive slightly upwards. So now that we've confirmed our actuator is wired properly and our switches are set accordingly, we're ready for the job site. So that wraps up this video on the SQM5 actuator. If you have any additional questions related to the SQM5, feel free to check out our extensive video library. You can also contact your local Siemens rep or your Siemens sales account manager.